Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to be making some snowflake DIY earrings. Uh, these will be made with uh, HTV, uh, heat transfer vinyl, or some people call it iron-on material. Uh, I'm going to do a double layer uh, teardrop earring. Uh, both of these um, in this particular pair are double-sided. They actually come double-sided. Uh, it's so fun to see so many of the shops where I buy my faux leather starting to offer double-sided faux leather. There are just so, so many great options, which makes uh, making the earrings a lot more fun because I used to have to make my own double-sided faux leather because you couldn't really buy it that way. Um, and some of these double-sided faux leathers are su super cute. Like this one has a great pattern, and then the back is just a more subtle, solid, pebbled faux leather. Um, and so it just makes it really fun when there's all these great materials that you can use uh, to put them together. Here's another good example. This is like a silver, and then the back side is a gold, uh, which you can't really see because it's the top layer, but it's just nice as your earrings dangle when you've got that double-sided. It just looks good from both sides. Now, in the video today, I really want to focus on heat transfer vinyl. I hear a lot of questions about heat transfer vinyl. Um, pretty easy to use on leather, but when you're using it on faux leather, you do run into some more challenges. Uh, it's so disappointing when you make a great earring and then you have an indentation around your faux leather where you, you know, put your iron or you put your Cricut Easy Press onto your heat transfer vinyl and the carrier paper actually makes a line on your faux leather. I mean, the heat kind of melts, I'm going to call it melt, whatever it warms that uh, um, faux leather and it just doesn't look very good. And so I want to talk about some things that I do to try to minimize the visibility uh, of those lines. I work really hard on my earrings uh, so that you don't see those lines. Um, and it just makes the earrings look so much better when you're working with heat transfer vinyl if you can't see the carrier paper. Uh, and so I'm just going to share some tips about what I do. Uh, there's probably lots of great ideas um, out there. And the one that I've been using the most recently as I've been filling uh, my stock or filling my shop with stock for Christmas, it actually is, is kind of funny what I've been doing and I've wondered why haven't I done this for a really long time? Maybe you guys already all do it, um, but I hadn't been doing it. So I'm gonna share that little tip with you today as well. Let's take a look at the supplies for the project. So this is gonna be, even though I showed you a lot of designs, this is the one I'm gonna make today. This is my most popular design uh, across all different shapes and icons that I use on the earrings. People love this black and white buffalo check with a red with a black. Uh, glitter iron on. So this is the one we're going to make today for the project. So this front piece is this really cute buffalo plaid. This is a double-sided. I'm going to link up to this material below. Um, this is one of my favorite uh, and sometimes I, I struggle like do I show the glitter side because it's so pretty or do I show the buffalo plaid side. Um, and then the other the other one I'm going to show you or we're going to cut for this project is this double-sided uh, faux leather. I use a ton of this and I have this in a few different colors. I do want to point out, and this is important when we when we get ready to do the uh, heat transfer vinyl, this one side here is super, super smooth and the other side has more of this pebbled uh, faux leather look, the pebbled leather look. Now when we put on our heat transfer vinyl, um, you've probably noticed if your heat uh, is too hot it will melt your faux leather and this actually it like melts down the faux leather and so you'll see part of it like melted and then the rest of it has the pebbled faux leather. I even see that sometimes in um, in different shops. I see earrings where you can actually see where the faux leather melted. It's tough, it's pretty tough sometimes to get your heat transfer vinyl onto the material without damaging the material in a way that it's visibly evident. And so one of the things that I learned, and this is what I wanna show you today, uh, is that when I'm using the uh, faux leather for heat transfer, I actually find it to work a lot better when I use a smooth faux leather. Like it just doesn't melt or create evidence of melting uh, visibly when you look at the faux leather. And so if I were to put heat transfer vinyl on this for this exact same earring, 
um, it would melt this and it wouldn't look as good as if I put the heat transfer vinyl on this back side. It kind of like a lot of people feel like, gosh, this is so pretty. I want this to be the front. And I'm, I'm not saying that that's, that's wrong or you shouldn't do that. But I think it is harder to get that heat transfer vinyl onto the front uh, with this. Now, some people have asked me, well, can't you just use uh, vinyl and not use heat transfer vinyl. Well, you could. I don't. I don't put the vinyl stickers on my earrings, but I know other people that do. So I'm not saying that that's not right either. I do always try to. I do the iron-on material onto my leathers. So I use this backside, and that works really well for me. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to be using um, this green mat today. Uh, and I'll kind of work my way as I talk about my materials. I'll start down and work up. So I'm going to use my green mat. I'm going to use this uh, contact paper. I use this on top of my mat. It just helps keep the mat sticky and it doesn't get debris on my mat. When I cut it, there's always stuff that ends up here and it's just hard to get it off even when you clean them. So I use this to, to keep it clean and make it sticky. Um, and that's how I'm going to cut these two pieces. I'm going to use a heat transfer vinyl. And the color I'm going to use today is black. I'm going to do a black glitter. I love glitter uh, heat transfer vinyl. Um, and I'm going to make a chunky, uh, I'm going to make a chunky um, snowflake. And so I'm kind of, keep, I keep taking you into my kitchen lately to show you how I organize this stuff. But I, cut, I do cut my heat transfer vinyl just to be really efficient with the vinyl. I try to cut at the beginning of the season, my uh, vinyl and I keep it in these ice cube trays. And then um, I keep it in a drawer just to keep it dust free. Um, but here's where I have all my different colors of, you know, these are, these are the white chunky uh, snowflakes and I have all my different colors here and I'm all ready to go when my orders come in. So, but we'll actually, even though I have these, we'll go ahead and we'll cut them today. For those of you who don't know how to cut the shapes, we'll go ahead and we'll cut through all the different materials. Um, and if you already know how to do that, you can always kind of fast forward to the point where we're actually putting the um, heat transfer vinyl onto the material, if that's really more what you're interested in. Okay, so you need your heat transfer vinyl and then those are the components you're gonna need to make it. I use my Cricut Easy, my uh, Cricut Mini Press. Okay, this is one of my very favorite tools in my toolbox. And I don't remember how much this was. This was a gift for me, but I can't remember. I feel like it's like $69 or something. I don't think it could be too off. This is like the best thing ever for earrings um, because it really lets you control where you're applying the heat. Um, and especially when you're working with faux leather and you just want to be careful not to apply it for too long, it just really helps you, uh, manage that process and you never really leave it on more than about 20 seconds. So the little one just works so great and it doesn't take up much room at all. Um, and then of course I have my earring supplies. These are my pliers, or you might use a pair of pliers and a, a jump ring tool, anything to help maneuver the, um, jump rings and the hooks. And then I'm using, I'm going to do gold hooks. So here's my jump rings. It's just container jump rings and a thing of hooks. And then I have my hole puncher. This is a big one. I also have a long one, a long a little one. Uh, these holes punch about two millimeters. I actually like that size. I do have a smaller one because sometimes the top of my earrings are small and I don't want, um, a really big hole because I don't want it to, you know, break open across the side. So, but in these earrings, I think the two millimeters works really well. So I'm going to use this hole puncher. Now I have linked below to all the materials I'm using today. And in addition to that, my favorites, I've, I'm linking my favorite faux leather shops, my favorite leather shops, uh, everything down in the comments. Um, I'm pinning, uh, pinning a comment to the top. So it's easy to find it. And then I'm also putting it in the detail section of the video. If you open that up, you'll find it in there too, just to make it easy. Um, I'm also going to link to my webpage because on my webpage, I have pictures of everything. I have a website and I have screenshots of this project, uh, screenshots of all these like project images, photos. Um, I think I added all these in there. I'll double, double check that. I think I'm pretty sure I added all my pictures in there. Um, and so you can even, and even under the project images, I'll usually link under the image of the project, then I link up the materials in that particular picture. 
So check out my website um, and you'll also find lots of other earring posts uh, with instructions and photographs and things like that. All right, so uh, we've gone through the supplies. We've looked at what we're making. Let's jump on to uh, the Cricut Canvas to design what we need to send to the Cricut machine. Okay, so I've got my blank Cricut Canvas and I need to get my earrings onto the canvas. And so the first thing that I need to do is insert those images. Now I have already uploaded those. If you haven't done that, you just come to this bottom icon upload and you tap that and you select the file wherever you downloaded it. Um, mine is already uploaded, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this images button. And I'm gonna tap on it one more time, click on that one more time. And a third time, I'm gonna try to get this menu up. And once that comes up, I'm going to come over to the ownership and click on the plus. And I only wanna see, because I wanna quickly get to my files, I'm just clicking on uploaded. That just brings me to all of my uploaded files. And then from here, I can click on the file that I need. Um, if I need multiple files, uh, I can click on more than one. Notice how the green comes around it when you click on it. Let's say I also wanted this file right here. Notice this remained green, this remained green. Anything with the green outline around it, um, when you click insert images, will come onto your mat. So I'm gonna click it again, and then that, that deselects it. So I've only selected this earring, and I'm gonna go ahead and insert images. This image does come on very large. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just take it down to two inches just so that I can see it and work with it. So while it's selected, I just come up here to the top um, and next to the H that stands for height, I enter my two. And so that's gonna bring that to two inches. And that way I can see the whole shape and I can easily edit it versus it coming off of the screen. All right, so uh, the first thing I wanna do here is create my back earring piece, right? Because I've got two, two teardrops that I need to create here. My back one is my um, larger one. And so I'm gonna do my back one first. And so I am going to just duplicate the same piece that I just brought onto my mat. I'm gonna duplicate that because uh, that's what I'm going to use to make the back piece of my um, earring. And of course, this back piece is, there's no cutouts or anything like that. It's just a solid teardrop. The way this file is designed, this snowflake will cut out of your teardrop. You've seen I've got a lot of earrings like that. That's not what we're making today. There's no cutouts in the middle of the earrings. So I need for that to go away. And then I'm also, I want for the hole in the earring to go away because I'm gonna use my leather hole punch. I, I like to do that much better than cutting, having my machine cut the small holes into my leather. Um, and so I need for both of these two things to go away. To do that, I'm gonna come to the bottom right hand corner. There is this option, it's the only one that's even available on the bottom side. And of course, I've noticed my Teardrop is still selected up here. The box is still around that earring. But in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the contour uh, function available. So I'm gonna click on that contour button. And um, this is where I can hide parts of the image. So we know I want the teardrop to show up. What I don't want to show up is the snowflake. So I'll select that and notice how it becomes shaded and the hole at the top. Those are the two things that I don't um, want to cut out. All I wanna cut out is this teardrop. So I have those selected and then I can X out. Um, so I don't come down here. Sometimes you might feel like once you select some things, you need to pick an option on the menu. That's what's intuitive, but we're not gonna do that here. We just click those two things and then we X out. And you'll notice when we get to our mat that it's a solid teardrop, okay? This is our back teardrop. Now for me, this is, you, you probably don't need to do this. I need to keep these standard on my side. I have some sizes for certain earrings and I wanna standardize these and I'm actually gonna cut these um, for my site. And so um, I, I do change these a little. I'm gonna unlock my padlock here. And the reason I'm doing that is you'll notice if you, um, 
make this bigger or smaller, or you change a height position up here, um, it automatically is adjusting the other dimension, the width dimension, because it's keeping these proportionally the same. So if you want to actually make a change where the it's not locking down the proportions, you've got to unlock the padlock. And you can either do that by clicking in between the width and the height fields right here, or you can do it over here when you're actually on the image. So um, I'm going, it doesn't really matter. I'll just click on it right here. When it unlocks, you also see the icon up here appears to be unlocked. That tells you your proportions are unlocked. So I'm gonna do this, I already had it too. I'm gonna turn this back to two, um, but I'm going to make my back width 1.4. It's really, that was a small difference. No one would even notice, but I'm just, I try to keep everything very consistent. So that's my back piece. It's two uh, by 1.4. I am gonna go ahead and lock it so that I don't accidentally do something uh, to change that. So now if I were to move, pull this toggle, it would keep these two uh, changing in proportion. Okay, so now I need to do my front piece. So I'm gonna, um, and my front piece, just as a reminder, it's also solid because there's nothing cut out. My snowflake is actually this heat transfer vinyl. So I'm gonna make a copy of the piece that I made for my back piece. Go ahead and make a copy of that. And just so I don't get confused, I'm going to change this one to a red color to remind me that, you know, this is my front piece because I know the project I'm working on has red as my front color. So to do that, I'm gonna come up here and click on this box next to, you know, the line type. It's gonna be cutting this line around this teardrop. And I'm just gonna change that to red to remind myself this is my red map. So on this particular teardrop for, for my dimensions, I also have to unlock the proportionality because I've just found a teardrop size that I like for my front. So I'm gonna unlock this and my front dimensions that I like to use are 1.8 high in height. So I'm just gonna enter 1.8 into this H field. And then over in the width field, I'm gonna change that to one point Oops, I did it, 1.2, that's what I like there. And I like uh, how that size comes onto this size. I like it because I've kind of, I've experimented a lot and I like the amount it shows on the sides along the way down. It shows just a little peak and then I like the amount it shows on the bottom. Th this is such a personal preference. I have different sizes that I make as well. This is just the one I like with the kinds of things I'm putting in the middle. It just kind of allows me to fit the shape and get the kind of peak outs that I want around it. Um, okay, so I've got my front and I've got my back. Just to kind of uh, help put this earring together, I can pull it over onto my, my back earring. You can, can, can start to see how those layer up on top of each other. Okay, now what I need is I need my snowflake shape that I'm gonna cut out of my HTV material. So I'm gonna go back to this original image and I need to isolate it right now. The only thing that's cutting out on this image is it's cutting the outside teardrop. It's cutting around the snowflake um, and it's cutting this hole. I only want the snowflake, so I'm going to, while it's selected, I'm gonna go back to the bottom right hand corner and click on this contour button again. But this time I want to hide the teardrop. I don't wanna cut that out. I wanna hide the hole. I don't wanna cut that out. The only thing I'm not hiding and it's not shown as selected because it's not shaded is the snowflake. And while it's selected, remember I'm not coming down here to click. I just uh, click on the X. And what that does is it isolates that snowflake to me. Now, this snowflake is gonna be a little too big. Actually, we're gonna do this differently. This is a smarter way to do this. I'm really sorry. Um, what, I would, what I would need to do is pull the snowflake over and um, I, I'm, I'm gonna go through this just to kind of teach you, as, for those of you learning, um, I'm gonna walk through why I'm gonna do this differently. Um, first of all, I, I want to show you this on top of the front layer and see how it's, oops, see how it's coming um, behind this layer 
when I try to move it. So I'm gonna right click on it and do send to front. And now it will let me bring it over to the top. But you notice this is too big. And so you've gotta kinda size it to fit, uh, to make it fit on this front layer. Well, I could have done this differently uh, in a way that would have gotten this to a really great proportion for me without trying to figure out how big do I want this? Do I want it this big or do I want it that big? So I'm gonna pull this over and I'm just gonna delete it because we're gonna do this a different way. I'm gonna duplicate this smaller teardrop. This is the one on my front. I'm gonna, while that's highlighted, I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna use this one to get my snowflake because uh, the snowflake is already sized out for this one because it's part of this actual image. So while this is selected, even though we don't see the snowflake, it's just hidden. I'm going to come back in by clicking on the contour button in the lower right hand corner. Come back to the contour button and now I want to um, unhide the snowflake. I don't want it hidden. I want to hide the teardrop so I'm going to click it so it's shaded and the um, hole is shaded as well. So the only thing not hidden now is the snowflake. And then I'm just going to click the X in the upper right hand corner. And this snowflake, while I do need to change the color, so I'm gonna quick go do that, I'm gonna change that to black up here uh, in this line type, line type section. Change that to black. This should already be sized perfectly because it was part of this image. Um, it was just hidden. And it just helps, you could have done it the other way and played with the sizing. Um, but this is just really cool because it makes it the exact intended size and you really don't have to fuss around with it. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and now we're ready. This is everything we need to make this earring. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this earring. Oops, I meant to select the whole thing, okay? And I need to make my second earring, right? Cause I'm making two. So I click the whole thing, I duplicated it, and now I'm ready to go to my mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the makeup button in the upper right hand corner, and um, it will give us a look at our mats. Okay, so it's always good to look at your mats before you do a cut, because you know it is true while I, I played with my colors correctly and kind of said, well, my back layer, I, I labeled it as black. It's got some black in it. My front layer, I labeled as red because it's a red faux leather. And then my snowflake, it is black, but it's a different material. It's not cut out of the same material as my teardrop. It is a uh, iron-on and HTV material. So I actually need to cancel this cut because I need to change the color of the snowflake so it's not cutting out on the same mat as my faux leather. Because remember, by putting colors in, it's not actually cutting the color. By selecting the colors, it's just telling Cricut that this is cutting on a different mat, on a different material or a different you know, you're not cutting it on the exact same cut. So I'm gonna come into the snowflake. It really doesn't matter what color I call it. Again, it's just putting it onto a different mat. I think I'm just gonna make it white to make it kind of easy for me. Um, and now that will put that on a different mat. Or if that's confusing and people think, oh, I, I'm not gonna know what kind of um, heat, you know, transfer material to put that on, you could always just pick a different color a black, the whole point is just making sure it's not gonna cut on the same, um, it's not gonna come cut on the same mat. All right, so I'm gonna click make it again. And now you'll see my teardrops are isolated to this mat. Um, my second mat looks as though it's my um, heat transfer vinyl. And then my third cut will be the red uh, front layer of my, of my earrings. Um, this is also where you might consider using the material size. I only have one pair of earrings, so they're all over here to the left. It doesn't really matter. But when you're cutting a full sheet of earrings, uh, most leathers, uh, unless you're using Cricut, only go about eight inches over, but it will automatically line up your, um, your Cricut cut space to come all the way over to 12 inches. You can move those, you know, we can we can move these things, you know, just by dragging and dropping them. 
So anything over here, the ones that were like coming in over here, they could be drag and dropped, you know, just to fall below the eight inch mark all the way down. Um, but you can also use this material size, which I really like. And I line that up to, you know, usually I line it up right around here to 8.5 by 14. Even though the leather's only eight inches, it you can see how your margins come out. It still usually keeps you over b before the eight inch mark. Then you can drag and drop. So that's just, I know we don't need that for this project, but I do that all the time. So I thought I would share that too. All right, so we are ready to, it looks like, cut our mats. Why don't we start with our back mat, uh, which is this double-sided um, glitter, fine glitter on the one side, faux le leather on the other side. And I'm gonna show you, both of these are kind of funky because they're double-sided. I'm gonna show you how I cut and actually do them different between each other, how I cut these double-sided leather. So I'm gonna uh, reframe and get down to look at my space where I'm setting up my mats to cut. Okay, I'm going to use my, my green mat to cut this faux leather. Um, and what I've done is I have cut myself a piece of transfer tape. If you see my video, you know, I always put transfer tape down onto my mat on uh, for my cuts because it just keeps my mat really clean um, and lets me use it a whole bunch of times and still have that stickiness that I need to when I'm cutting materials for faux leather earrings. Now I'm not, usually when I cut, I, I fill full sheets. So this is really different for me, but for the video today, I'm just making this one pair. Um, I would usually normally cut a piece of contact paper the same size as my sheet of leather. But for today, I just cut it uh, to the size that my mat shows, you know, for how big of a space I'm cutting earrings on. I'm not going to worry about uh, the part of this mat where my material's touching um, that doesn't have it because I'm not cutting there. So this isn't going to leave any debris behind. It's when you make the cut that it's kind of leaving stuff on your mat. So I put my, um, my Cricut or my, um, transfer tape down. This is, uh, I'll link to this below. You've heard me talk about this. It, you know, it can get expensive if you put contact, not contact paper, you could call it contact paper, transfer tape down on your mat every time. But I found this big bulk roll of transfer tape that I love and that's what I use and it's like so much more economical for me. So I put that down and then, oops, this is not what I do. I put it down so that the, the glitter um, is actually facing down on this one. I always find it easier anytime you'll notice, anytime I cut chunky glitter or regular glitter, I always put it down. I shouldn't say always because there's always doesn't really fit any situation. I almost always put it down to, I almost always put it down so that um, the glitter's facing the mat. I'm trying to find my tape. I didn't have that when I said what you need for the project. But since I'm facing glitter down, I always tape it because glitter never holds. I think it's fine because I, um, I think it's fine because I'm not cutting there. It's really when I cut that I get pretty messy. You all know I, I always tape, or you might know in a lot of my videos, I'm taping. Um, I only tape when I use glitter. I rarely tape outside of that. Um, but I do tape along the side and I just make sure like this isn't good even right here. I don't feel like that's a real smooth edge. I really don't want things that will pick up because if they start picking up, that's when you run into problems with your tape. Um, and then your, your material will lift. Okay. I'm going to just try three sided. I don't even think I'm going to do that fourth side. All right. So I think this is ready to go. Okay, before I put this through my Cricut machine, I need to go ahead and set my material. So I'm gonna click on continue. And, uh, you know, I've, I've cut this. First of all, I love this material. I have, I have used this on so many earrings. I'll be using it again for Valentine's Day. Uh, buffalo plaid, I used it for Halloween, fall. I mean, you just see it everywhere. I hope it, I hope it stays in for a while because it's so fun to work with. Um, and I've cut it different ways because I have, I just ordered, well, I just ordered four more sheets of this one and four more sheets. Uh, there's one that's like a red and black buffalo plaid and the back is red glitter. Just ordered four more sheets of that too. But um, I've cut it a lot of different ways. 
and I um, find that the shimmer leather cut turns out to be a pretty good cut for me um, when I'm doing these teardrops. So we're going to keep this on a shimmered leather um, and then we'll go ahead and send it through the machine to cut now. I don't modify the pressure uh, because it's really not that thick. Um, I'm trying to, now that I have it on, it's probably harder to see. It's really not that thick of a material. All right, so let's send it through. So I have to tell you, I'm super excited. I don't know if you ever noticed, I'd have to go back and look at my old videos to see how my setup showed on camera. But I had my Cricut machine like kind of rigged on a really skinny cart that I had. Then I had a flat thing like on top of that. And then my Cricut was on it and I'd bump it and everything would shake. I finally bought myself this cart and the Cricut fits right in between uh, the two bars. And then there's just a bunch of drawers below. In fact, I might show you after I, um, after I uh, eject this. But uh, it is like my life is so much easier now. It was, I feel like it was only like $70. It was the best investment that I've ever made. Okay, so you all know that I always make a big deal out of um, not ejecting my mat until I make sure that my cut has gone through. Because you never know, I've cut this a lot of times. I don't know if you've noticed, but even when you buy the same material from the same people, um, it's not always consistent. I learned that pretty early. Um, so you can't always really count on anything. So I always want to check, um, to make sure that my cuts go through before I eject. So I can see here, it looks good. It looks like a really clean cut. So I'm going to go ahead and eject my material from my machine. Okay, let's go ahead and pull the tape off, salvaging it. I'm going to use the same tape on my other one. Um, so I don't want it to curl up and stick to each other. And then, of course, since I had tape along the edges, it's going to still be on my material. No big deal. I just pull that off. Um, yeah, my tape off. All right. So this is a really, this made a really good cut. Um, these earrings just come right out. I say they come right out. I hope that's true. Ooh, they're not really coming out so hot over on this side. Um, it's like it's a little caught up. Uh, hate that. The first one came out so perfectly. See how you can see it's cut? It's just a little hung up on that side. So I'm going to get my scissors. It's good to have a pair of um, sharp, small, really detailed scissors for this. Um, I just went, oh shoot, I think I just bumped my, bumped my camera. I just went to um, Hobby Lobby recently and just got myself a really nice pair of small scissors. Uh, for situations like this. Now, I always like to know which side is facing to the front. That's the one that matters most. So if I'm gonna make any error in cutting, um, and I, I don't know if error is the right word, but I want to protect the front side of this earring, right? Because uh, the back is just, the only reason the back is double-sided is just so that when it kind of moves around, you know, it has a great look to it. But it's okay, like you're, you're cleaning up your backs all the time anyway, they're not perfect. So I'm cutting around here. It's so annoying when this has to happen. Um, making sure that I am not cutting that front layer because it's such a perfect cut. You don't want suddenly to feel like that front cut doesn't come around perfectly. And when that happens to me and I do end up cutting the front cut, I won't put it in my shop. Um, I think it's just too noticeable. Okay, I wanna show you something too. I'm not cutting, I'm just kinda taking my knife, or my knife, my scissors. It's like almost, the cut is just like almost there. You almost don't even, you can almost punch it out, I guess is what I'm saying. I didn't do that though, I cut it. Now, when I look at the front of this earring, it's still, per the front is still perfect, this front layer nothing it's still the exact same shape and cut i do want to come around to the back side and um, see where i might need to clean it up because there is kind of some stuff that might be sticking out you don't want the back side layer sticking out so i'm just taking just a little trim along the back side And even though the backside doesn't quite matter as much, it still looks great. You're not going to even, don't even notice anything here. 
and your front's perfect. All right, so we've got our two pieces for the back side. Now we'll go ahead and get ready um, to do the, um, the front layer. Now the front layer is a little thicker. The material for this front layer, we're actually gonna cut this as genuine leather. I've also used a lot of this. I'll link to this below. I have it in white, like the exact one in white. I've got one in black that's a little bit thicker. Um, and also, I don't know if you call it not so soft, like the it's like a little more stiff. And I have found that when cutting these, I do a lot better if I put it on a genuine leather setting. So you all know, or, or a lot of you know, when I cut uh, genuine leather, I would typically use a purple mat. I always just kind of say the deep cut blade goes with the um, the deep cut blade goes with the purple mat and the fine blade goes with the green mat. I'm actually not going to change out my mat. I'm just going to leave my mat. Now I never cut on. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, I'll say I never use the same one twice. Look at this. Since it did not, did this one? That is so bizarre that the first piece totally cut out, but it didn't even cut through this layer. So I'm not changing this out. I'm using the exact same piece. I would never, if it did cut through, you would have these, you know, teardrops on here and you'd pull them off and throw them away. I would never cut on top of those because they won't line up exactly. And then you have lots of little pieces. So even though it's like, oh, I could get another cut. Look, it's so clean. I could cut another cut. It will be a nightmare when you do need to take off the transfer tape. So I never use the same piece twice. Although in this case, it appears that it did not cut through. Okay, so you always wanna make sure you know what you're cutting um, and whatever this, see how this is this lighter shade? That is what is about to cut on the machine. I think anyone that's used a Cricut for a while, um, I would imagine most people have accidentally cut the wrong thing out of the wrong material. So if I were to put this, uh, this mat into my machine right now and I would press cut, it would be cutting these snowflakes because that's the one that is highlighted. I'm actually gonna come back to that one. I wanna cut this red sheet, my front uh, teardrops. So I actually have to click on it and then you see it's the one that's light. And now it shows that this is the one um, that I'm sending through the mat. I was playing earlier when I changed my setting to eight and a half by 14. It automatically, since I said that, it changed me to this really long mat. You, it's fine if it does that. I do that all the time and I'm not using the long mat. I'm using the regular 12 by 12. It, nothing, nothing happens or goes wrong. But I do wanna change the material. So I wanna come over here and I want to cut this as a genuine leather. So I just clicked right here on the, um, on the name of the material and I clicked genuine leather. I did realize when I was showing you my first selection of shimmered leather, you may not have your favorites menu set up. You may have to search for that. So if you're searching for something and it doesn't just show up on your menu, you just come over here and you can um, even search leather. Oops, leather. And it brings up all your choices. And so this was the shimmered leather that I had used before. If you want something to show up on your favorites menu, you just click right there and you put a star and then it would be on that front menu so you don't actually have to search for it. So these are the three that I actually have um, in this category on my favorites menu because I use these three all the time. Um, the one we're getting ready to cut right now, we're using the genuine leather setting so I can just click, I'll see a green check mark. That means I've selected that one uh, when, I'm, when I'm selecting from this type of menu, just look for the green check mark and then I can say done. And it will then change my setting to genuine leather. Now, the, the, you do get some prompts if they're concerned uh, that you need to take action to do something different. So this right here is saying move star wheels all the way to the right. I'll show you what those are here in a minute. And then when you're done, uh, return them back. And then it's also telling you, hey, with this material, you actually, this is the blade you need to cut it. And to cut genuine leather, you do need a deep point blade and clamp B. So I've cut this without having it on a genuine leather setting. You could probably do shimmered leather more and do more pressure. Um, I just, this is what, this is my go-to now. I've, I've, you know, it's worked sometimes, does work sometimes. So I just now always go to my deep, uh, deep point blade. But if you don't have one of those and you're, you're wanting to experiment, you could try to do it with the shimmered leather, more pressure. 
All right, so uh, we know we've got to change our blade when we go over to our machine. So why don't we head on over there and I'll show you the star wheels and we'll change the blade and we'll cut this back layer. Okay, when it said to move the star wheels, those are these white pieces right here. They're normally positioned at different places across your um, Cricut machine. It really just holds down your material, your paper and so forth. But when you're working with thicker materials like genuine leather, or in this case, I'm picking genuine leather because my faux leather is so thick, it's a thicker material. You wanna just move these over to the side because in your thick, in your thick material, these are gonna leave track marks. You're gonna actually see they're kind of, you know, it's holding your material down and they kind of have those rough edges. Those will actually mark, like when I cut full sheets of leather, even when they're all over here, I probably should put like, it says move them over to the right. I haven't done this, but probably should be like one over on the left or something, then it would at least be in your margin because it does leave track marks uh, down that side wherever they are. So I've done that, and then the other thing I need to do is I need to change my blade. Changing your blade is a little different if you're working with a Cricut Explore Air. The, the contraption is a little different, but it's really easy to do whether you're working on a maker or, oh, I didn't tape this down, and the reason, it's so funny, I said I was saving my tape, which this just reminded me, because I was gonna use it on this other piece, but I really don't need to use tape when I'm, um, when I'm not cutting with glitter. So that's kind of funny because I don't, I don't tape down, but that's what this tape is sticking on here for. Um, so changing my blade is really easy. I just need to open this up. This is where I keep my blades. I always try to just make sure it's clean, <sighs> give a little blow. Um, I do see, you know, particles and stuff on there. And then I just need to open up my um, open up my piece. If I remember right, I haven't used my Explore Air in quite a while. If I remember right, this whole thing doesn't open up on my Air. I felt like it just opened enough where I could drop something new in. On the Maker, it totally opens up. Um, but you just take it out. It's that easy. You just take it out. And then you, in an Explore Air, you just drop it in. This is already somewhat kind of closed. You drop it in. And the maker, you kind of got to hold it in while you close it or it'll like fall out like that. So you put it in. I always try to make sure that I press it down because I've actually put it in before, kind of like this, and then I've clamped it tight and it's not setting all the way down. So just kind of make sure it's setting down, resting on whatever that is. And then you um, close that. And you close that. There's no lining this up in a certain way. You know, the blade's on there. You don't need to make the blade face any certain way. You just drop it in there like that. So changing blades is super, super easy. Like I never, early on in my Cricut days, it stressed me out to think about changing blades. Like I thought I had to line things up and get really specific. And that's really not the case. Um, it's, it's super simple to change. Now, if you're finding anything at all helpful today as you watch the video, I would love it if you would take just a second and tap that thumbs up button to let me know that you like it. And um, I've got to pull this out. That's one thing. I have very little space to do all this work. And um, when I have this too close to my walls, the mat comes through, things can actually bump against the walls. So sometimes I got to like pull my card out. Um, but take a second to tap that like. If you want uh, more videos, I do a lot of DIY earrings, a lot of Cricut projects, uh, seasonal decorating, seasonal DIY, Dollar Tree DIY, all that kind of jazz. Um, if you think that's something you might be interested in, I'd love it if you would subscribe and even hit that bell button and then you get notifications as I post new videos. So I'm doing my lift test here. You can see both of those cut very well through this so I'm good to eject it. If it didn't cut all the way through before I would tap the flashy button, I need to hit this Cricut button because that's gonna send my mat in, it's gonna do the exact same cut again um, and then give me another chance to check it. A lot of times sending it back through again will be just what you need to get that final cut through. If we would've sent the other one back through again, would have come, I mean, it was like hanging by a thread. It would have got all the way through. We just did the test and we thought it had cut through, but it really hadn't. All right, we're gonna go ahead and eject this. And I think while I'm right here, I am gonna go ahead and change my blade back. I'm known to go to uh, HTV after cutting leather and not putting that uh, the regular fine tip blade back in. But I do wanna point out, hit my focus in, see if I can 
we can get in a spot that oops, I'm trying to move it around so the light's good right there. It's hard to see there. I think you can kind of see there's tape on my blade, blue tape, blue painter's tape. Um, because it was along the side and it got caught up. So you do want to check your blade. Let me get that off. Be really careful. But I do want to get that off. And then I also had fuzz, blew that off. And now my blade's good. I want to clean that before I get in with my HTV. Again, I'm putting it into this contraption. Um, and I'm making sure it's setting on, you know, this piece right here. So it's going down as far as I can. Shutting it and then latching that. And now I'm back ready to cut with my fine tip blade. Super simple. All right, so here we go. We've got these two great red pieces. And you can see how they're gonna layer up so nicely on top of the buffalo plaid. So the only layer we have left to do now is our, um, our glitter. And I do need to get the get this heat transfer, not heat transfer, this uh, paper transfer tape off. And so this is the part I don't like: is that you've got to take the transfer tape off, and then everywhere where you had a cut, you know, it's cut. And so you've got to take those off. And sometimes I just remind myself: well, on the sheet of of material you know you've cut 20 pair of earrings so of course it's going to take a few minutes and that's all just part of making it is you've got to clean that up so i've got this ready and clean so that i can put my uh, glitter hdv onto my mat i'm going to put this uh, piece of hdv down onto my mat and the shiny side i guess i should show you that before i have it on there there's a shiny side really like plasticky side and then there's kind of this matte side when you're working with htv most of the time you are going to put it so your shiny sides down i'm going to call it good side this is actually the side that will be the good side that you'll see on the earring minus the plastic carrier piece um most of the time the good side is going to go down i am going to show you a project i have really cool uh heat transfer vinyl that is awesome for earrings because the print you can order it with the print really tiny that's one thing about earrings sometimes the patterns on heat transfer vinyl are so big they're large scale that when you're doing it on an earring by the time you get it to the size of the image you know that you're cutting for your earring you kind of lose the pattern and so there's some really cool htvs you can buy that are small scale now you, you work with them differently. So I'm gonna do a different video about those. Okay, so that's face down. So I have got my um, stuff on my material on my mat and now we need to just change our setting. Okay, like I said before, as you move through your different cuts, it is automatically gonna to default to whatever material you last cut. So here you can see how this is the shaded one. This is where it's coming to next. You do see little check marks here when things have already been cut. So we've cut the black, we've cut this red, um, and now the one that's shaded and highlighted here is the one that the machine is ready to do next. Um, and you'll see the base material right now is set for genuine leather, but we know we're not doing that. So we just click right on top of this, and that's how we get to our materials to choose from. Um, there are a lot of different glitters. This is a glitter iron-on. Uh, but again, if you don't have your favorites already set, you can just browse the materials um, and click on iron on and you'll see all the different options. Sometimes when you're not using Cricut brand, sometimes you might try to figure out what is it that I'm supposed to be picking. Um, but I typically am either using everyday iron on or glitter iron-on. Those are the two that I use the most. And in this case, this is a glitter iron-on. So uh, we'll just click here. If you're cutting a glitter iron-on and you select like an everyday iron-on, it most likely isn't gonna cut through. I've, I've made that mistake uh, before. And so you really wanna make sure you're getting yourself on the right setting so that if, you're, if you are cutting glitter, you're gonna get a good cut in your vinyl. It's, it's not worth messing with trying to cut through. I've had problems and I just, I just throw it away. If I can't get through it, I'll, I'll just throw it away. So glitter, and then once we've selected it and we see the green check mark here, we can go ahead and click on done. 
And then I don't do anything to the pressure here. I just leave it at the default and I go ahead and I send it through the Cricut machine. Now I've noticed that, you know, some of the, um, some of the rolls of iron on that I buy, uh, don't really want to stick to the mat. So this is also a time when I do find myself using painter's tape to hold my material down. It is funny though, when I use the Cricut brand, I find that the material sticks to the mat much, much better than when I use other brands um, and I'm needing to tape them down. But just know you may be using a material that doesn't really want to stick. And when I tape my HTV, I do try to tape around both sides of it. Um, this cuts really fast when you're only just doing two, so it's really nice. Okay, so you can't really see your cut at this point, uh, so we'll have to take it over and I'll show you uh, how I weed and then um, also um, how to apply it. Okay, now I just need to weed the iron on so I only have the shapes that are gonna go onto my earring. I did wanna show you this tool that I recently bought. Um, I, I was looking for the Cricut, I think it's called the light box. I can't remember the exact name because I was having a hard time weeding and seeing where my lines were and, I, and I'm doing a lot of heat transfer vinyl. I couldn't find it. So I ended up buying this one on Amazon. I can't remember how much I paid for it. I want to say maybe $30. It came with a whole bunch of tools. I think those are still in a bag. Um, and I, it has like a USB plug, so you can either plug this into your computer, which is what I do, or you can plug it into a box. And it just helps bring light to your space so that you can see where the cuts are. Um, and it has like three different levels of light. So you just keep tapping this and you can see the levels change to brightness. Um, and I and it just helps me, even in my office, I don't have the best of lighting. It helps me see where uh, the lines are so that I can um, help assist getting the, the material up. Some material just cuts really well and then sometimes I find that I have to do a lot more work um, to get the material cut out, especially if there's a lot of twists and turns. Um, and so I don't know if, if you, if I, first of all, I didn't have one of these forever, like a, any kind of light tool and I survived. Although I actually sought one out when I started doing a lot of iron on just because it really helps me. Um, especially if I'm, you know, weeding at night when we're watching a movie or something, it gets me the light I need to do what I'm doing. Um, but I can still hang out with the family, you know, while I'm doing it. So I can see with that light peeking through here, I can see where the cut is. It doesn't want to come up. I'm really surprised at how hard this cut has been. I really thought it would lift. Sometimes with the glitter, you know, sometimes it doesn't want to come up. But at least with that light showing through, I can see where to press down uh, with my weeding tool. I can see where the cut is. So I can just kind of press down on that part while pulling up around. I don't like it when it doesn't come out super easy. The good thing is don't think that it's not cut just because it's kind of fussing a little. Sometimes you just have to hold the pieces down with your weeder and then just give it a little pull. Um, again, to do that, you really need to know where the lines are. That's what I was struggling with. I was doing a lot of letters and um, it was just really giving me a hard time because they're like E's with the little hole in them. Like when you're working on earrings and you're doing letters, they're pretty small, and so um, you really need to be able to see what you're what you're trying to keep down, or it's just going to come up. You're going to lose your dots of your eyes and the you know middle parts of your A. You're just gonna you're gonna have you know problems. Um, again, it's not a necessity. I did think I'd show it to you because it's something I've enjoyed using. All right, so now we have got our pieces of uh, heat transfer ready to go. All of our components are cut. We're ready just to put our earring together. And this is where I just wanna show you some things that I've learned um, about how to get this onto your material without uh, creating a show of the, um, of the transfer. So I think what I'm even gonna do is I might do some, I'm gonna call them bad ones, just so you could really get a feel for what I'm talking about. 
I'm gonna get my mini press up here. I'm gonna go get some extra just pieces and parts that I can kind of mess up uh, just to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now I might be using, um, as we do these demonstrations, different uh, colors of things. I'm just trying to use different scraps I have that I don't mind uh, throwing out. Um, first, why don't I show you what I'm talking about with the, um, with the lines showing in the carrier paper. So I see this a lot. I used to even do this and have problems. Oops, I can't put a red on a red. You're not gonna be able to see. We'll do this one. Um, putting uh, carrier sheets onto faux leather and ironing them. I've seen this a lot where you see these lines. So I'm gonna put that on here. I'm not even gonna worry so much about centering it up. I do need to grab a piece of parchment paper because I never, um put the mini press right on top of this that just that heat right this would like melt to my mini press so i use just little pieces of parchment paper um so i've got this on here put this here i have my mini press which oh my gosh if i haven't told you i love my mini press this is like the best tool in my toolbox when it comes to making earrings with heat transfer vinyl so i set it to the lowest setting so just the one dot if you haven't seen these like you Press it twice and it goes to the second amount of heat, the third amount of heat, and then off, and I'm gonna turn it back to the first again. So I got the lowest heat, and I'm just gonna put this right on my earring. Um, and you, the one thing about this one is it doesn't have a timer. Uh, my Big Easy Press actually has a countdown, which I love, so I find myself counting to 20 um, just to myself. So, okay, so let's take a look at the line. Um, I left it on for about 20. I didn't really count, but it looks like the, the material is sticking okay. Um, it doesn't look too bad. I'm going to go ahead and take it off. It doesn't look too bad, but I think you're going to be able to see what I'm saying. See how you've got this line here, and you've got the line here. And I don't really notice it so much at the bottom, and I don't really notice it so much at the side. Uh, but you can see the carrier sheet. I just wanted you to see what I was talking about. Sometimes it might be more uh, prevalent. And then if you're doing layers of, um, of the pieces, then you see layers of lines in different places. So I try to really minimize that. And that is a question I get a lot from people is how do you minimize, you know, how do you not make those lines show? Well, the first answer is sometimes it's hard. Um, but one of the things that I had been doing for quite a while, and then I'll show you what I do now anytime I can, because I still have to do this approach sometimes, is I do really try to trim my uh, heat transfer vinyl as close to the lines as I can. Like, I'm not going to go crazy and cut down in there, um, but I'm trying to trim it as close to kind of more the outside lines as I can. Um, and what I find when I do that is often I have no lines at all. Um, if I do have a little bit of a line, it's, it almost looks kind of like it's in the design, um, because of where it is and it being so close. Um, but honestly, most of the time I just don't have a line. And so I, it's an extra step, kind of a pain because, you know, if you're making a lot of earrings, but I do it, but I do it, um, especially like with my, uh, the Chiefs, I'm selling a lot of Chief earrings right now. And as I do those, um, I kind of do this all the way around the word Chiefs, because when I don't do that, you have a big square that you see come through on the carrier paper. So that's trick and tip number one is cut close to the lines. Uh, well, I guess I could go ahead and do it and show you. Um, and then one of the third tips while I'm getting this applied is um, not to press too hard. Like if you press really hard on here, it's kind of pressing that material into your, uh, your faux leather. And as you do that, it's like pressing it down, making the line. So I mine, I could pick my hand up. I'm not actually applying any pressure. Like when you're working with small pieces like this, it just doesn't really take that. And so uh, that's another tip that I have. Tip number two is don't press hard. Um, now it looks like here, I'm kind of having a hard time too because I'm not counting um, to see if it, if I can pull it. After I do this, just so you know, I always come back in again. Um, that would be 
Tip number three, only, only have it on there as long as it takes to get the carrier sheet off and then continue to heat it to really make sure it sticks. So that's tip number three, only do it as long as it takes for the carrier sheet to come off. So I don't think it was on there long enough, so I'm just gonna stick it on there again for about another 10 seconds. Again, I would normally kind of be counting one, two, three, four, five. That's what I do. I, I probably should get a timer or something. Uh, but on this mini press, you don't have that, and so you're kind of counting it. And I do that just so that I can um, make sure that uh, it's gonna be on there. Now, I'm using, these are some scraps, because if you're going, oh my gosh, it's not really cut exactly, that's why I'm using these. <laughs> because they're not exactly cut just right. I do want to show you one more thing. Um, well, let's try to get in here close so you can see how you don't see lines. See, there are no lines. I see no lines at all. The way I cut that uh, close in, there are no carrier lines. And that's what I find, like when I cut it like that. It's really good. Um, but, oh, I was going to show you one more thing. See how, like, on this one, you just don't really notice any melting? I was going to show you um, how this side has kind of the pebbled look. Um, let's do this gold one on this side. And I'll kind of show you what I mean. Or maybe I won't. Like, I notice it more on some materials than others. That it uh, kind of melts a little bit more and kind of leaves the material looking a little more melted. Um so it may not happen on this one, but at least I can show you what I mean. Hopefully it'll kind of happen and maybe I'll leave it a tiny bit too long. Um, I feel like it's been about 10 seconds, so we'll give it a try, give it a whirl and see what we see. Um, looks pretty good. Oh yeah, I, since this is a square, of course, we're going to have our lines, our square lines. Um, so you can see those again here. See how you can see the square of where the carrier material was. Um, I'm not really seeing on here melting. So this one, eh, actually I do see it over here. So let's see if I can focus in over there. I'm not trying to nitpick things. I'm just trying to kind of share with you things I look at, things I see. It's not a big deal. Sometimes you wouldn't even notice. Over here, it's totally melted to where you can't even see um, any pebbling you know, there's no texture left there at all. And then kind of, you kind of see it all the way up to here. And then I start seeing the, pe the kind of pebble texture. Again, at the top, I see it in the middle of the snowflake. I don't see it anywhere down here. It's all like kind of melted out, no texture. So that's just, I'm just telling you so you just be aware of it. You may not, you may not care. Um, but if you care, that's where you can just check your materials because what I've learned is that on the back side of some of these when I'm using double sided, I just don't have that problem when I'm using, like this didn't melt at all um, and this still looks great. So I'll always iron on to this side. And then it's nice too, because when the other side does show, you've got a really pretty kind of pebbly look. So this is all just kind of sharing little tips and tricks that I've learned. Now I was getting really tired of cutting out the um, all the iron ons and and so one day I was just thinking, well, gosh, I mean, is there a different way? I'm always kind of trying different ways. And I thought, can I just like peel this thing off? Because remember to cut them, like it was taking me, you know, I make a lot of earrings. It was taking me a lot of time at night. Um, this was pretty much my evenings. I work during the day. And so at night, this is what at night, I'm with my family, but I'm also like, uh, weeding and, and doing all this kind of stuff, ironing on. I bring my little kit up out of my office, up into our family room. Um, and so you can see how quickly I was able to get that off. And now I'm not even on the carrier sheet. And now there's zero uh, chance of any lines on my material. So I really, um, this is the way that I'm doing it now and I really like it because um, it doesn't take me that long to lift. I do this on all my shapes for holiday. I don't do it on letters because that's when you really gotta cut around. You still need it to line up and um, you need it to, your shape and your center, you know, it needs to be centered and spaced apart. So you can't really do it on things like that where um, it's more than one piece. But if it's one piece, this is a really great solution, you know, for that. 
um, because you can get it on there. It looks fabulous, and there are no there are no lines. I also find that sometimes I'm having to heat it up for too long uh, just to get it off of the carrier sheet. So it's really nice because now I'm only heating it to get it to stick to the material. I'm not getting it heated to try to help me get it removed from the carrier sheet. So I also just find that I'm having to heat less with less chance of damaging the faux leather. So these are kind of my trip, tricks. So the first one, gosh, I hope I remember the order of them all. Um, the first one was to cut close to the material. Um, I think the second one was, oh, see, this is a good example. Oh, wait, what did I just do? I did it on the wrong side. Oh my gosh, I wasn't paying attention. Gosh darn it. Okay, look what I did. I did it on the wrong side. It melted. So look at this. See how I did it on this side and um, it it melted down in here and so I don't have that pebbled look anymore. So I can't put that in my shop. I'll just have to throw this away. I'll keep it like I did this time. I used it as an example. This is the side that I should have put the iron on on and I wouldn't have had that melting. Um, so I'll just have to pull another one of these out of my tray. I've already pre-cut a bunch of these because uh, I use them for so many different earrings. I'll make this one up and then I'll come back and we'll put these um, earrings together. Okay, so I did go ahead and remake my uh, other earring and I did put the snowflake on the right side. So for those of you who are new to putting together earrings, I'm just gonna show you super fast how to do this. Uh, there's different sizes of hole punches. I'll link to mine below. Um, I typically like to tie uh, to put a two uh, millimeter hole in my earrings. Um, and so I use this hole punch, it's a leather hole punch. And so I use this tool to do that. Sometimes if I have really narrow earrings at the top, I'll use a smaller one and I'll link to my smaller one too. It just has a smaller hole, uh, which is just nice because you don't want to have a really big hole, um, where you don't have a lot of earring because you don't, definitely don't want it to rip. So I just kind of eyeball it, um, knowing that I'm putting it as close as I can to the top. I kind of I kind of feel like I'm seeing painters tape on here. I see a little bit of blue. I think that's just a little bit of painters tape. All right, so I have these ready and now I just need to put them on my hooks. I'm using fish hooks. Um I'm going to just kind of move this cuz then I have a solid background just to kind of help see the pieces and parts. I have a fish hook and I'm going to actually turn this. I only want to put one jump ring on my earring and so uh, if I only want to put one jump ring, I'm going to need to make an adjustment to the fish hook because if I don't, when I put this jump ring, probably better for me to hold it with my pliers. Uh, when I put this jump ring on here, it will hang like this. Okay, so you can see how, why that is, right? It's going to hang like that. So they're not connected now, but that's how they'd be connected. Well, if this is like this and the holes on my earring are here, that means to be on this, they would be like this. So in essence, they would face to the side. I don't want that, I want them to face to the front. So I can either add another jump ring, which is a great option, or if I don't wanna do that, I can twist uh, these bottom parts of my hook. So to do that, I always do mine the same way. I hold my hook up on my left, it's kind of having to twist here based on how this camera is. Um, and then I turn this, to the side. I'm pushing this ball up. Um, for those of you not as familiar, you can see how this isn't closed. Look at the top of that, it's not closed. I just turned it. And so now that I've turned it, it's actually, um, there we go, can you see that? Do, do, do. It's actually uh, now facing. So this is perfect. This is how I want it to be. So I need to do the same thing with my other hook because um, it's going up and down and I want it to face to the side. So I'm gonna use my pliers. I'm gonna hold this ball um, and I'm gonna turn that to the side. Okay, so now I've got both of these. When you look at the hook, this thing is going across, not like this. All right, then now it's super easy. I'm gonna grab my jump ring. I need to find the opening. The opening is gonna to point to the top. Okay, so opening to the top, just kind of feeling it. Sometimes I have a hard time seeing, uh, but I can feel that. 
um, at the top. And then I'm taking my pliers in my other hand and I'm grabbing the other side and I'm just pushing one side back and keeping one side forward. Um, and doing that is you don't want to open them this way. You want to open them this way. That way when you close it up, they'll close nice um, and tight. All right, I'm going to slide my earring onto my jump ring. So that's what you see right here. My earring is on my jump ring. And then now I'm going to take my hook and I know I want my hook to face backwards, so I'm gonna put it onto my jump ring. Oh, dang it, I hate it when that happens. I dropped my jump ring. Let me pick that back up. Let's see, I'm trying to find where the opening is. and It's kind of, ah, dang. Okay, here we go. Sorry, earring. Earring. Okay, both the earrings are on. Got to keep holding this tight. I just hate it when I'm not holding it tight and then I drop the jump ring. Okay, now the hook is on and now I just got to close the jump ring. So I'm going to grab it. Close it up, making sure I really get those two um, pieces of the jump ring completely closed and there's my earring. I'll do one more. Hopefully I do a better job on this one. I kind of failed on the first one. I'm looking for the looking for the opening, which it's really hard because they're completely closed. You're just trying to find this crack. Holding my right pliers up and down, holding my left pliers up and down, pushing back, directly back, and then just putting my earrings onto the jump ring, okay, there's that. And then taking my hook, putting it on the jump ring, making sure that it faces back. Ah, dang it, I did it again. Sorry, gosh darn it. I am losing my grip. Okay, there's my hook. And Got both sides here, and I'm just gonna push these back together. This is kind of a good example. I push them back together and they're not lining up. So I've gotta, there we go. Just kind of kind of maneuver them around and make sure it's fully closed. Clo closed. Okay, so that's it. Super easy to make these really cute snowflake earrings with faux leather and black glitter heat transfer vinyl. I hope you learned some great tips for how to apply the heat transfer vinyl without uh, melting or damaging the faux leather that you're putting it on. And also hoping that you learn maybe some tips and tricks for how to apply it without leaving those lines that you can often see from the carrier sheet when you're applying your heat transfer vinyl to faux leather. Again, if you found anything that was helpful in the video, I'd love it if you take just a second and tap that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you think you might find some value in watching some of my videos, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and maybe tap that bell button. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.